This is a quick review of the Beofang AR5RM and I wanted to <clears throat> I wanted to contrast it a little bit with uh, the prior ubiquitous radio on the planet the um, UV5R and so <clears throat> a couple I want I feel like y'all should know some of the differences uh, especially since these are like almost entirely the same price now. <clears throat> um, these are actually on a prime, spring prime sale right now, and they're literally the same price as these used to be, which is really crazy. So uh, first thing you'll notice the screen on the AR5RM is at least double the size. Uh, it's also LED instead of the old uh, LCD technology. Um, the LCD uses way less power, but that's like completely irrelevant with batteries these days. But uh, this doesn't give off any light, and it's always on. So simply shining a flashlight, you know, on it at night gets you to be able to see it. And there isn't any light pollution unless somebody broadcasts, but you can program that out or tape this off. Uh, whereas this one, I have this always turned on so you can see it, but it has a time. You can set this to a timer too. The volume and on-off knob is, I don't know, maybe 30% bigger. They're both uh, really responsive good buttons though. The push to talk is a little bit squishier on the 5RM. And it's a little bit more tactile, uh, positive clickiness on the UV5R. Um, almost everything on these is the same with the push to talk, the volume uh, on off, and the antennas. Uh, are all, the antennas themselves aren't the same, but the connections are still the same. Uh, frequency modes in exactly the sp same spot. Uh, switching to A and B is in the same spot. Uh, this is a new button. It's a scan. You can have a second. I won't show it, but you can have a second 5RM and uh, broadcast on one, scan on the other, and then add the channels. Add the channel to the second radio, which is pretty cool. You can only do one channel at a time, but if you're out in the middle of nowhere and switching channels to with somebody, that'd be really easy to do. And then add it to the radio set. The menu buttons are still the same. The exit's still the same, except it's red instead of exit. The lock and unlock is in a slightly different spot, but the lock and unlock's still there. Um, one of the main differences is you can change the power on this on the keypad, and you can't. You gotta go into the menu for this one. Um, some people might see that as a positive or a negative. Oh, also, uh, the buttons on the 5RM are way bigger, and so in talking to a lot of people, they already said they love the fact that the buttons are bigger, and they love the fact that the screen's bigger, and with a bigger screen is bigger icons, so A and B channel is almost impossible to see on a UV5R. <laughs> it's only a couple of pixels. Whereas you can see really easily, um, you see main switching back and forth. It's really easy to see whether or not you're on your A or B channel. Um, there's also a scramble mode on this where you can sync two of these together with a scramble on the channel and other people can't understand what you're saying, which is pretty neat. And um, this also has a thousand channels whereas this only has like about 117 or so. So you can program in like half the planet on this thing. So uh, it's much better for folks that are traveling a lot. Maybe, maybe the most important, the original UV5Rs are only a couple watts, like uh, four watts. Uh, these come out of the box going up to 10 watts now, which is a pretty big deal. Even though you have to triple your power output, to kind of double double your distance 
uh, 10 watts is still that sweet spot um, to where you have to go to a significantly bigger, more expensive unit to get up to 25. So 10 watts has always been the sweet spot. It used to be you had to go from a UV5R to a, a BFF8 a HP, and then you could still only get up to 8 watts. So uh, the BFF8 was kind of more or less the upgrade for the longest time for the UV5R. And now you can just get AR5RMs and be good to go. They come with bigger batteries. Uh, and even with the BFF8 HP, like this was like a, this used to be like a pretty substantial battery, like you were moving up in the battery world. But now uh, you can see like these big honking batteries. This is like a brick. Um, charging cables are, they have updated charging cables for these. But you still charge them exact, or I mean, you still program them. I'm sorry, program them exactly the same. Which, let's see if I can do this. I don't think I can do this one-handed. Nope, I lied. So there you go. That's the charging. I mean, gosh, stop. That is the um, programming port. Programming on Chirp is really easy, relatively speaking. The last big thing. These have. These have USB charging ports. Now, the giant battery has it on the bottom, which is kind of dumb, but whatever. The normal has it right here on the back, which means they can stand up. And see, these are normal, normal USB charging ports, USB-C. So you don't ever have to do those uh, cheap cradles again. These always had to be on a really cheap cradle. And they're big and bulky and dangerous. Um, um, these, um, these covers from Father Abraham, those covers, they have those for the AR5RMs now too. So if you like, if you like these, Father Abraham's site has them. Keeps your radio from rolling around and getting turned on in your backpack and your battery being dead when you need it. So... I would say though for starters, though, these normal batteries are just fine. They'll probably keep you going for listening, at least in listening mode for days. That's all I like. Uh, do you have anything else? Do you have anything else to add, Ringo? Do you have anything else to add? You can't think of anything? Okay. So, other upgrades. Um... You should eventually work on getting Nagoya antennas. Um, a lot of people said even the original rubber duckies were better. These are, they do feel like a little bit cheaper. They'll work though. I can't think of anything else. Uh, if I had to start all over, if I was a new person, I would get these hands down. Um, the AR5RMs. I would, I would definitely just go straight for these. Uh, if only for the thousand channels and USB-C, um, but there's, there's so many things besides that, like I said, so, um, there's other features too, I mean, these things have a million features, they've got flashlights, um, like I said, they can scan, so it's like a built-in frequency scanner, um, suppose that they can frequency hop too, I haven't got that set up yet, and I don't know if I'm going to because that's kind of more more work than than really what I need around here. You can um, out here in the middle of nowhere, nobody's even on these frequencies. So, but uh, if you're going to report me to the FCC, uh, I haven't been broadcasting on them. This is just for I have these channels and frequencies up here just for illustration. So if you have any questions, let me know. These are on sale. I think for a few more days. And, uh, yeah, and the, the links, I suggest getting them in two packs because it's a little bit more affordable. And that's about it. And me and Ringo are going, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.